going to talk about um, weaving without a backing. Uh, everything we've done up until now has had a foundation backing. And this is another option which has a whole different dimension. Uh, it simply feels different, it's much lighter, it's reversible, and the, the woven result itself has a much different character than your foundation weaving. Depending on how you do it, it has much more dimension, it's puffier, has a little give to it, and I think it has uh, other applications. Um, you might, because it's so thin, you might be able to use it as an applique. It makes a great patch. And it can also be a really uh, nice way to make small components to decorate clothing. And, you know, you can even chain them together, sew them uh, in some kind of collage method and make a whole reversible cloth out of them. So I'll be discussing that later, but I just wanted to show you the simplest way. There's many ways to achieve this. Um, and the simplest is to create something where you can uh, kind of fake a loom. Because what we're doing uh, with this method is we're actually going to weave uh, with tension. The strips are going to be held um, for you and that gives you a whole other set of options. So, I mean, there are many ways you can weave and there's many, uh, you could go up to a very large size depending on the equipment you have, but let's just start with something simple. I think the easiest thing to use is just simply a shoebox top or an old cigar box is fine. Um, something that has a raised up surface that's strong enough and also uh, is going to hold your strips. And there's two ways to, um, to attach your strips. Uh, I basically usually just start with something shorter. I just kind of uh, wrap them around like this and actually tie them in a bow. The thing about this method is you need a little bit of a longer strip. And the reason I tie them in a bow is so that I can get them out later. I've done one here already. And you can see that I'll just be able to pull these out later without unknotting them or cutting them or wasting anything. And then the other option is to actually wrap them around and pin them on the back. Your, your safety pin is your best option, but you can use couple of straight pins, that's fine too. So let's just see where we are with this now. What, what you've got here is you've got a nice, um, a nice setup where you, you're, you're kind of hands free here and you can get a better feel for your weaving. And let me say also that the tighter you pull your strips, the more they're going to contract when you take this off. So if you want a real puffy dimensional fabric, then you can really stretch them tight. And what you'll want to do is just start weaving. And also, I want to mention that you don't necessarily have to use straight strips either. But here you're really going to get a feel for the weave because you're going, instead of lifting your strips up, you're really going to weave them in and out. And it's a great way to get a sense of how the weave works. Now again, I start from the middle. And one of the di most different things about this method is, and I do, I'm, I'm keeping a bunch of needles here threaded, is that you can go right in And actually, I'm not even going to say baste here. I'm going to say quilt as you go. You can stick your hand right in there, get at it. Now you can use this like an invisible baste and make a long stitch on the back. But because you don't have a backing and you can use both sides, you might want to consider what kind of stitch you're taking. I mean, I, the first go around, I would just give it a try and see how it goes. It's really easy to get at because you can go 
in between all the strips. But this is a, really going to shorten your process because when you're done with your little piece here, it's already going to be secured. I take a little back stitch at the end and just chop that off. Let's get another strip here. I'm going to do the opposite ones. Now I'm doing a simple weave here, but I, I guess you can notice that you you can almost see the graph paper here uh, and you you could go back in and get another needle. It's great to keep uh, your needles threaded and always come up underneath the strip to hide your knot. You could really get to a feel of how the weaves work and design right on the web here because for me, when you don't have to be picking up the strip so much, you can experiment with the floats and the way the design works a much, much easier. So this is a great introduction to woven fabric. But you see how well this comes together and how quickly. Now for instance, I could just let this float over three and start to make a design right here. Or I could actually follow my weave assistant by numbering these and when it tells you to lift one you're just going to put your strip under that particular number so if you'd like to try some other weaves with this that's fine too. As an option also if you don't want to stitch all the way across you can also do a tie you can just take a couple of stitches and place at either end, just like you did with your pins. If you want to just hold it like that. This is really fun to do on a train or during your commute to work. People will really stop and ask you what it is you're doing. Okay, so now we have a sample. So all we're going to do now is we're going to turn this over and undo the bows. If you have the extra fabric, this way you can reuse the rest of the strips or you can utilize the fringe in some way. Okay, now you see that both sides are usable and you really get a beautiful loose dimension here. I mean, now you can go back and use this for just about anything. It can just be a piece of cloth that you stitch and use as cloth or uh, you can use it for all kinds of things. So I, would, I suggest you try some of these. They're really fun and they really give you a nice feel and a nice result. And I've got another one here that I just want to show you one more option. You know this is flexible. You can scrunch these up and you can fold them or you can spread them out. But the, one of the most interesting things I like is you can actually go back in and split these. And then you can actually have a whole other set of weaving elements that might change your design into something uh, much smaller. So you can start going in and actually making some compound weaves right on your loom. They're just different options with each technique. If your strips are thin enough you can just go back like that. You don't even have to cut them off at the end. So play around. I think you'll find that this has an, a whole other set of possibilities.